Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Matt Hartman from Tour de Force. It is uh, a little after 2 o'clock. We do still have a uh, few people. It looks like I can see the attendees still uh, coming in, but we're going to go ahead and get started. I do want to respect everybody's time, and those of you that are on time, I want to uh, get started as close to 2 as possible. Um, this afternoon session is what's new in Tour de Force version 6.5. Um, before we get into the session today, I think a lot of people, I know that we've at, got the questions asked, uh, there was a lot of talk and a lot of discussion about what the next version of Tour de Force was going to be. It was going to be version 6.2, um, and we'd originally planned on getting that release out uh, uh, several months, months ago. Uh, we were trying hard to get it out well before the users group, um, and based on feedback from the users group, they really didn't want us uh, presenting and focusing on brand new fe features that people did not have the opportunity to use. So we decided to take some major new features that we were working on, uh, delay the release a little bit further. Uh, so version 6.5 has a lot more uh, a lot more in it than it was originally planned as a 6.2 release. So hence the multiple dot uh, in increase on the release. Um, the session today, we have uh, 90 minutes planned for the session. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to need all 90 minutes. I'm not sure if we're going to have a, a lot of questions that will take us over the 90 minutes, but I'm committed to stay on as long as the questions are coming in at the end. Uh, I do not have a hard, hard stop, and I want to make sure that all the questions that you guys have that I can answer. Um, not to say I have an answer for everything, but I'll try. Up in your Zoom meeting, for those of you who have not used Zoom, if you hover the mouse over the top of your screen, you should see a control panel. On that control panel, there is an icon for Q&A. If you have uh, any questions along the way, go ahead and submit those, those questions during the webinar, and I will go through those at the end. Uh, we won't be taking questions during the session, but go ahead and get, get them on the list, and then at the end, we will make sure uh, to get through all of those before we get off the call. Okay, first of all, a review of today's agenda. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge our beta sites for version 6.5. We had actually had a little smaller group of beta sites uh, for version 6.5. We had several clients that were in the middle of implementations that we really don't consider beta sites, but they had um, long extended implementation plans, so they participated as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we had committed to do in 2014. Uh, a lot of you probably recall back in January of this year, we did a survey. We sent out a survey on behalf of our development team and asked a lot of questions about, about what you wanted to see in the product, what your greatest pains were. Um, our, our goal for 2014 was to focus all of our development efforts in what our customers wanted, not necessarily, you know, all the new great things that we can add and all the ideas that we have. Um, and, and that's there was a lot of great feedback that came out of that survey, uh, and I'll share a little bit about uh, how that changed our mindset on what, what we wanted to do. We will then go into what is new in version 6.5, and, and there's a lot new in version 6.5. Quite frankly, there is a tremendous amount of new things that I, I really can't demonstrate because they're more usability-based. Um, that you'll you'll recognize and you'll see as you begin to work with the version 6.5 release. Most of those come around the significant improvements that we have made on speed and performance. Uh, I'm going to cover a lot of those areas that we have focused on, uh, what's been done. So if there are technical people on the line, I'm going to try to break down uh, some of the things that we've done from a from a general user and, and actually get a little bit more, more detailed uh, on some of the technical things that we've done as well. We're going to go into a demonstration of the new features then. I've got a couple of things that I really can't demonstrate very well. Uh, we don't have a demonstration environment that uh, lends itself uh, to every possible uh, business case and business scenario that we would want to demonstrate. So there's a couple of things that I'll just need to show you, uh, a couple of things that we'll talk about at a high, high level, uh, but then you can obviously I'll work with our consultants to get a little more, more detail on those areas. And then we'll finish up at the end with the uh, discussion of the process for getting up, upgraded. You know, fortunately, it is a very, very uh, straightforward upgrade. Um, one of the things I see already is my uh, version 5.1 beta sites. Obviously, these are 6.5 beta sites. So version 6.5 beta sites, uh, pumps, parts, and service. They are an Epicor Prelude user. 
they participated with us on the implementation of the Prelude quote to order. So if you're a Prelude user, a Prelude now has an API available which allows us to do two-way uh, synchronization of information. Uh, the piece that Pumps, Parts, and Service worked on us with is the quote management system in Tour de Force. Uh, if you're a Prelude user, you now have the ability to generate quotes, get accurate pricing, and convert those quotes from Tour de Force directly into a Prelude order. Um, KL Jack, uh, Epicor Profit 21, uh, they've been uh, instrumental in working with us on the Google Sync in integration. Uh, the Google Sync integration works a lot like the Exchange Sync where you have, if you're a completely non-Outlook user, you have the ability, as long as you're using the Google for biz Business, you have the ability to synchronize information, uh, appointments, contacts, the email logging with uh, Google Business. Triphase automation. Huge help to us in the, uh, again, in the quote to order process. Uh, one of the things that we've done with Profit 21 in all of the different systems, uh, the what we call Tier 1 systems that we interface to, uh, those Tier 1 systems would be Prelude, uh, Epicor Prelude, Epicor Eclipse. So as I was saying, um, triphase automation, I think is where I left, left off, was a, was a significant uh, help to us in building and developing the two-way integration or the quote to order process with Profit21 um, and also expanding that significantly to fully respect the matrix pricing and contract pricing. So in version 6.5, you now have the ability to use Tour de Force from a quote management standpoint access your inventory, get accurate pricing uh, based on price con contracts as well as matrix pricing uh, directly from Profit21. And that also applies to Epicor Prelude because we use the Prelude API. It applies to InforSX Enterprise because of the util utilization of their API. It also applies to, uh, to Epicor Eclipse. So all of those systems fully support the quote to order and full respect of pricing by customer. We are also in the middle of working uh, on the same features for True Links and for Tribute, uh, and there will be more that we expand to in the future. Abco Refrigeration out of New, New York, uh, I want to give them special credit for their work with Tour de Force uh, in this version 6.5 release. They have been instrumental in, in, in pushing us, uh, in challenging us, I uh, can say, on more and more functionality as it relates to job management. And when I talk about job management, what I'm talking about is the ability to manage public bid jobs through the opportunity management functions of Tour de Force. Uh, they use our system extensively uh, to manage jobs, track jobs, and, and they've been a significant help to us in uh, coming up with new ideas and new things that we can add. And I'm going to show you a couple of those new features today, uh, not in a job management, but the, the utilization of those features in other areas of the product. All right, so some of the things we committed to do in 2014. First of all, out of that survey that we did early in the year, it was loud and clear that people wanted us to continue to focus on new features. They wanted us to continue to enhance the product but they did not want to see any more degradation of speed and performance in order to get those new features. And I think that's a pretty good summary of a 20-page survey uh, uh, that, that we got. Um, and so we really sat back at the beginning of the year and said, you know what, we, we need to put a couple of things that we want to do on hold, and we need to just comb through code, comb through the product everywhere we can and come up with better means of identifying issues, identifying speed and performance issues, as well as uh, you know fixing those speed and performance issues. So I'm going to go through some of those things today, and then uh, once you get up on version 6.5, especially remote users, uh, you're going to see some pretty significant enhancements in version 6.5 related to speed and performance. We also uh, had a lot of people that uh, were pushing very heavy towards more and more of the core features being ported out into the mobile or the web-based inter interface. Now, that effort over the last 9 to 12 months has also led to um, probably creating some additional issues, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, uh, that we plan on addressing in a future release as it, as it relates to 
uh, Tour de Force Mobile or the Tour de Force Web. Also, a continued in, uh, investment in reporting, analytics, and business intelligence. Um, it, you know, it's hard to argue the fact that business intelligence, how you distribute and share business intelligence is a critical uh, thing for every customer today. You know, it's important for salespeople, for management, for marketing to be able to identify opportunities and be able to get the critical business intelligence that drives their organization's success. And so you're going to see today that we, we have introduced a lot of new features in the product uh, under this area, uh, and I think you'll, you'll be really pleased with what you see. We've also had you know, requests, uh, you know, especially from KL Jack, uh, the continued and further development to eliminate dependencies on Outlook and provide integration with Google Mail. Uh, I mean, I'll be real honest, we anticipated that we would have a lot more people looking at migrating to Google Mail. Uh, a couple of years ago, a lot of people were looking at it, people that were traditionally on Exchange. A lot of people looked at that migration to Google. Uh, unfortunately, we have not seen a lot of people make that move. We've seen a lot of people migrate to Office 365 or hosted Exchange environments so that they could offload uh, the management of an Exchange server from their network but very, very few people have migrated over to that Google Mail for business, at least in the industry sectors that we focus on in manufacturing and dis distribution. Another thing that we've done is significantly enhanced the BSI connector. We actually uh, hired a developer several years ago, and since he came on board, his entire focus has been on uh, rebuilding the BSI connector. You know, the BSI connector for most of you is something you hear about. It's something you've never really had shown to you. It is something that we talk, that our uh, BSI specialists, Jackie and Tricia, talk about a lot, and that's what they work, work in to make your changes. But it's not something that we actually train our customers on how to manage and uh, use on their own. Uh, because over the years, it's been a very, very complicated tool uh, that we use to interface to primarily an ERP, an ERP system, uh, but one of the things that we've done with a brand new uh, BSI connector is that we have expanded significantly the ability to set up custom sync jobs that allow you to synchronize data from anywhere within your enter enterprise, and that's really what the BSI connector originally was intended for. It's not just a, a, a method to connect to an ERP system for accounting and sales data, it's a method to connect to any data source within your enterprise. It also allows you to connect externally to maybe a, a, a hosted product that you may have remote access to. So the BSI connector, very, very robust. The, brand, you know, the new connector that we've started to use this year, anybody who's gone live has gone live with the new connector. You know, my ultimate goal with the BSI connector is that maybe in six to nine months, you're going to start to hear about training and giving our customers the ability to be trained on how to use that connector so that they have a little bit more control on their own about managing the interface to their ERP system and other data sources. We've also significantly enhanced uh, the features within quoting. Uh, the quoting module of Tour de Force has been uh, a module that's been widely accepted. It, it's used across a large base of our customers today. And I think, you know, as you go through the session today, you know, if you're one of our, if you're somebody who's using one of our tier one ER, ERPs, again, SX Enterprise, uh, Profit 21, Eclipse, Prelude, Tribute, True Links, any of those systems, the quoting is a phenomenal feature to allow your salespeople greater flexibility in generating quotes and then making it very easy to get those converted into your ERP. Uh, the workflow engine is something that we, we've added a lot to the workflow in the last year. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time um, focusing on that today because we do have a limited, a limited amount of time. Uh, workflow is something that has not been nearly as widely utilized within our user base as what we had expected. Now, we use it internally. It's the way we manage our projects. So when we implement a new project, if you are implementing a, a rapid implementation or a roadmap implementation or a BI implementation, uh, we also use workflow to manage the upgrade process. So when you initiate a support case with Tour de Force to get upgraded to version 6.5, there is a workflow for every upgrade. 
so that everybody has a consistent workflow that they go through and a checklist of things that need to be done with that upgrade. You know, great feature in the product, not widely used, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it today. So what's in version 6.5? First of all, uh, the major areas of focus uh, for version 6.5 were performance improvements. Uh, also, uh, Tour de Force Mo Mobile. And Tour de Force Mobile uh, combined a lot, combines a lot of new features with a lot of uh, enhancements and bug fixes to existing features. We've also introduced a uh, much expanded business intelligence component. So, you know, you've always had the customer-based business intelligence within Tour de Force. We've also introduced inventory-based BI, so there's a lot more fields that we store and calculate related to your inventory balances, um, inventory values based on average cost, based on rebate cost, all the different costing. You can now use your inventory uh, BI can be incorporated into the build your own reports. We've also introduced a opportunity-based BI. Opportunity-based BI is really intended for companies that are dealing in the job market. So the public bid sector uh, where you want to have a specific job or an opportunity and then maybe you want to tie sales from multiple ship twos or multiple customers back to a job, you can create a job number, and then you can tag ship twos or tag order numbers, back, orders, quotes, everything back to an opportunity so that you can really get a good look at what you actually sold within that opportunity. Um, and I'll talk about a couple of more examples when we get into that. The vendor-based BI, um, we've always had a vendor account record. So when you look at an account, there are different types of accounts in Tour de Force. Uh, one of those is a vendor account. Uh, you now, when you load or open a vendor account, you now have a vendor number, which will then give you a vendor BI tab on that vendor, which will show you uh, different types of business intelligence related to that vendor. A lot of changes in the Build Your Own Report Editor. And this is probably a good place to tell me, we're not going to get into a lot of the changes in BYOR today. Quite frankly, that's probably a, a, an hour to an hour and a half session of its own. And it's probably a different audience than what's on today. So Ryan Elliott, who is one of our senior application consultants, uh, in, in a kind of Mr. BYOR, is going to be uh, scheduling and announcing a webinar that he's going to be uh, doing over the next several weeks that will be primarily focused, well, it will be exclusively focused on build your own reports and everything that's new in version 6.5. So it will be a kind of a, a combination of promoting BYOR for those of you that don't own it as well as a more of a technical review for those of you that do own it that you can see and understand what's different. There's been quite a few changes in the screen designer. Um, a lot of that, a lot of those, those changes are visual, uh, just navigation, making it easier to navigate within the screen designer. Uh, and I'll go through those. Uh, then the quote manager, which we've already talk, talked about. And a lot of the changes in quote manager are, are really behind the scenes. There's not a lot to show there because a lot of what's happening when you add an item to a quote is all happening behind the scenes through the interface back to the ERP system. So um, I'll talk about that. We'll show you a little bit about that, but there's not a lot to show in that area. And then also the new BSI connector uh, with, the, with the highly configurable sync jobs uh, is another area that, that, that is there. Uh, we can talk about it and not a lot to show there. Overall, um, we've added about 83, I shouldn't say about, we have added 83 new, new features to existing modules that exist in the product. Uh, the only new module that was introduced in version 6.5 was the, uh, the expanded BI, so the vendor BI, the opportunity-based BI uh, features within the product. Everything else in version 6.5 was really on cleaning up, optimizing, and making additional changes to existing features. Uh, on a top of the 83 new features that have been added, 28 of those new features were features that came in from customers. Um, that came in from, uh, well, directly from customers that were incorporated into the product. And then we also have a 70, another 79 bug fixes that got reported by customers that have been addressed in this release as well. So let's talk a little bit about speed and performance. Uh, first of all, 
We've added a new, what we call a performance monitoring tool in the core product. Uh, this is not something that you as a user will see on your system. Uh, you have to have a special code to get into the performance monitoring tool, um, but it is something that our people can use uh, if you're having issues, if you have a specific user that is having issues working remote where their speed is different from everybody else or they're running into issues that nobody else has seen, our team will have the ability to get on and shadow that individual and activate the performance monitoring tool and be able to track every trace, every hop, every, every step in what's happening as a user performs a function. So it should be a phenomenal tool for, for us to be able to help you address those, those issues that have come up for years such that, you know, we have one user, he works remote, he's got this issue, nobody else has it. We now have a tool that we can help with uh, to solve those problems probably a lot easier. You'll notice today that loading forms in not only in the core product but in mobile significantly faster. I actually work remote from our corporate office, so I work connected over a VPN every single day. Um, and it, it's kind of, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but, you know, I've never been shy about admitting things that uh, embarrass me. Uh, this... When I when I began to work remote over a v, VPN, I had a whole new perspective of the performance of the system, and it's something that that I've invested a tremendous amount of time working with our development team on everything that I do day in and day out. Um, part of the reason why the performance monitoring tool was developed was so that I could monitor everything I did working remote and identify bottlenecks that were in the system that were not seen by users on a local area network, but would be seen by users working over a remote connection. Uh, as a part of that, we also had one of our lead developers, one of our senior ar architect developers, um, I had him work on a mobile hotspot that had a slow connection. So I actually had him for a period of time, he spent weeks writing code and developing and troubleshooting not working on the local area network when the, within the office, but actually not able to connect to the, to the local area network, connecting over a VPN through a mobile hotspot so that we could also see the impact of mobile hotspots and mobile connections where you get a good connection, but some, you get a lot of droppage. So you, you're, you're connected, you drop, you're connected, you drop. So a lot of the different things that are caused by those environments, you're going to see uh, addressed in this next release. One of the big reasons why we were susceptible to a lot of that was that we had a lot of, over the years, just to kind of back up, over the years as we've added and expanded our product, you know, there's a lot of new features and new functions that get added to existing core functions within the product. And so as a part of doing that, what we've, what we've done over the years as we've added a lot of layers on top of each other. And what we've done is we've gone back and a lot of, if there are technical people on the phone, you know, one of the things about a client server based application, um, you know, a lot of client server based app applications, they get called a very chatty application. That's a common term um, that your, your application is very chatty. It's using a lot of network. Um, we have significantly improved and eliminated a lot of the database calls that are needed need, needed to be made. We've also incorporated a lot of, of processes that run not in series to each other, but they run in parallel to each other. So when you perform a function, you don't have to wait for one thing to happen for the next to happen. That just adds on delays in, in performing certain functions. So by using the threading within .NET, and we have, are able to have multiple functions sharing a connection to perform different functions within the product. Um, and, and that has had a significant improvement on performance as well. We've also optimized all of the searches. So when you go through the global search, whether it's mobile, whether it's core, uh, we've added um, uh, key fields. So for example, when you're searching for an account, one of the key fields on an account is a, is a com company name. When you're searching for a contact, a key field there is full name or first name or last name or company name. So on every possible search within the system, we have identified what are those key common search term or search types, and then we have optimized those and indexed those searches uh, extensively to make them much faster. 
We've also um, optimized your or a, a system so that when you have a default view set up, the linked items grids within the system, each of those default views are going to be optimized for maximum performance. So those are things that are all happening in the background on the server uh, using some of the tools available within SQL. We've also cached all the user preferences. So over the years, a lot of people have, we've added a lot of user preferences. So each user can have their own preferences on how they do things, how they see things, uh, the way different things perform. We maintain all of those functions or all those preferences in the database in SQL directly. Um, but part of you know, that requires that everything you do in Tour de Force, again, you're making a call to the database. So now when you open up Outlook, we cache your user pre preferences so the access to those don't require calls to the database and they're going to be uh, pulling from your local cache. We've also moved a lot of client side code that was uh, things that were in the, the, the client side has been moved into SQL uh, so that it can be better, better managed and op optimized through the query plans that are available within SQL. Um, you know, when we converted and, and made the minimum requirements for Tour de Force SQL 2 2008, there were things that we were able to begin to do uh, that were not supported in prior versions of SQL. Th these are just some of the things that we've been able to do as a result of making our, our, our minimum requirement for, or our, uh, yeah, minimum requirement for SQL, SQL 2008 instead of 2005. And then we've also added in uh, within the within the uh, database schema update. So when you get up upgraded, there's one thing that's very important to know is that as soon as your upgrade is complete, you're not going to see immediate immediate across the board speed improvements. There are a lot of the improvements that you will see as a part of the schema update running for version 6.5, but a lot of those performance improvements are going to be seen as you use the product because those query plans are going to be able to optimize things within your system based on utilization by the users. Okay, uh, system requirements for version 6.5. Six, um, the same as, as the prior version, a .NET Framework 4.x or newer is required. Um, as I mentioned already, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 or newer. So if you're on a pre-version 6 product, um, you, you need to be on SQL 2008 or newer. If you are not on SQL 2008 and you need to make an investment in SQL, uh, definitely talk to our team. Uh, we are a Microsoft ISVR. Um, we get significant discounts. If the only thing that you're using SQL for is for tour de force, uh, we have the ability to sell uh, runtime versions of SQL at a significant discount over what you could buy at direct. Exchange 2007 or newer is required. Uh, we still do support Windows XP. There was a lot of talk that because Microsoft was not going to support XP, uh, that we were not going to support XP in this release, but we are still supporting XP Service Pack 3, uh, which means we also uh, support Server 2003 Service Pack 2. Uh, but don't expect us to support those in future versions. I'm sure uh, that we are. there are things that we are going to uh, want to take advantage of by dropping our support for those two versions. So uh, they are still supported now, but, but the end is coming. Office 2007 or newer is recommended, but Office 2003 is still supported. Uh, Google Business, if you are somebody who wants to look at or consider uh, converting to Google uh, as your primary mail or mail, mail server for contact management, email, calendaring, um, again, we do support that, but you do have to have a Google Business account. You can't just use a standard individual user for Google. Um, a lot of people asking about uh, Office 365. Um, Office 365 is something that we do support, uh, but it is not a black and white uh, issue. It's not something you just tell us you want to convert. There are some things that we need to do that we need to coach you through. There's some different settings that need to be uh, taken into account if you want to move to Office 365. So it will require our involvement to get it properly set up. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about some of the new features. Um, first of all, I want to talk about something that I really can't show. The Tour de Force Action Panel, 
this is kind of an exciting new feature. Um, and what the action panel allows, this is a, a, a panel that you can have launched from any third-party application. Basically, the way this action panel can be used, I'll give you two examples. The best example is if in your ERP system, you have the ability to add a text field or a user field that can contain a URL or a link. That link can then be updated. We have the ability to go through and give you a, um, a, a, an import file that would allow you to take that link and concatenate the Tour de Force account GUID or the contact GUID. So what that really means is inside of your ERP or inside of another application, you could actually have a hot link to get directly from, for example, a customer master screen into the action panel for Tour de Force, which would allow you from the ERP or a third-party app to, in one click, be looking at an action panel for a specific company. And then through this hyperlink that says test company, you could click that and get directly to the account or without ever going into Tour de Force, you could perform an action or view anything or launch a, temp a template. Uh, we have a customer right now in Europe that actually has a phone system that gives them the ability to push in the contact GUID of basically the, the uh, global unique identifier for a contact in Tour de Force they have imported into their phone system. So when an incoming call comes up, they have the ability to have the action panel pop up and load for the contact that is calling them. Um, this is going to be expanded upon, I'm, I'm sure, into other app applications. Uh, it does require some setup. Uh, and again, it would require your ERP system to have the ability to have a field in the system for that. With, in order to take advantage of the action panel, you have to have Tour de Force and Outlook installed on the particular system that you are wanting this to work on. Okay, um, So Tour de Force and Outlook have to be installed. The primary use, as I mentioned, uh, would be used uh, to be able to access Tour de Force functions through an ERP system or uh, through another application. You can do that through uh, the BSID or, for example, maybe uh, an email address. Okay, I want to talk about some of the, the live features. Now, this is where we're going to get into a challenge here. Uh, start to uh, connect in, get onto my demo system. All right, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the account record. And to start off there, I'm going to pull up an account in our system. I hope I don't have issues bouncing between the screens. I had dual screen set up before we uh, lost power, so it looks like we're good. First of all, on the account record, a couple things I want to point out here. First of all, for companies that use uh, the last activity date, the next action step within the system, uh, we have taken those controls, so whether it's on, an, on an, uh, an opportunity, on an account, on a contact, if you have a last activity populating or a next action step, directly from those fields. Seems like a little thing, but I'll tell you, since getting this feature, I use this all the time. When I go to an opportunity that I'm working on, if I just want to see what the next action step or what that last activity was directly from that icon on the, the record that I'm looking at, I can open up that particular form. Okay, So when I open up directly from the, the screen, I can go directly to what that last activity was. Okay. Also, we have added the ability for a lot of you are familiar with, obviously, profile tabs. So on the system, you can have profile tabs uh, that you can add across the middle of the screen. We have added in this release uh, what's within the screen designer, and I'll show you, the ability when you create a profile tab, you can de uh, define it as a profile tab, which will be across the middle of the screen. Or you can add what's called a full screen tab. So if I want to, for example, we had some uh, tabs in our system that had a lot of data on them that when you put them onto a profile tab, you can't see a lot of information. Now you can, when you create tabs and information, you can put that information onto a full screen or onto a summary screen. Okay. Another feature is uh, that I'm going to talk about is in the screen designer 
And this is how it's used. In the screen designer, you now have the ability to, to add a linked item as a control on a screen. So what that means is on any record, whether it's an opportunity, whether it's a, a, um, uh, a contact, an account, on a tab within the system, you can then link to multiple grids at one time. So for example, in our company, we use the recent touches tab is what we call it. And we just pick all the key things that are important to us. And I can go to one tab and look at this account. I can see all the recent activities, all the recent phone calls, all the open tasks, every support request, every appointment, every email, every opportunity. And I, you have the ability to define what is contained within this grid. It's a really cool, cool feature. I, you know, something that this actually came from. Uh, Abco Refrigeration, this is something that they had requested. They use it in their job management because what they do is when they create a job, they link a lot of different contacts, a lot of different contractors, and then they have a lot of different quotes. So they want to be able on their, they want they have a full screen tab where they can show everything going on at that particular job, all the bidders, everything. And each linked items grid can have its own filters, can have its own columns of, of what you want to see, but then you can still open and access the items. This is a, a really nice feature. Another thing that you have um, that relates directly to the screen designer is the ability when you want to make a change to a screen, if you're looking at a screen and you want to change that screen, all you have to do is if you have admin rights, you can now right click and just say edit screen and it will take you directly to the screen designer. It'll take you directly into the screen designer, directly to that record that you're working on and the, and the tab that you are look, looking at. So you don't have to leave the screen, go back to your admin console or go to the admin utility. It saves a lot of clicks just by being able to right click and go directly to this control. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that account. Actually, let's just do this. Let's just go ahead and close the account. I'm going to go back to my global search and go to my recent items. Um, and open that account up. Prior to uh, making the changes and upgrading to version 6.5, um, when I worked remote and when I worked over a remote connection, uh, we had a lot of information on our, on our screens within the system. It took me about 16 to 20 seconds to load an account on our system um, prior to upgrading to version 6.5. I can now, working remote, even over a slow connection, the difference between loading a form in the office and remote is not going to be nearly as much of a lag time. Um, you know, I see typically when I do a first load of a form every day, um, it's uh, six to seven seconds when I do multiple loads of forms. So as I work throughout the day and navigate the system, working remote, I'm typically seeing most of our forms, and we have a lot of user-defined fields on our forms, as you can see. Um, I typically see form load, load times in the five to seven, uh, five to eight, eight seconds to fully load a form on the, on the system. So... Um, you will see significant improvements for users that work in remote offices that have limited bandwidth and high, high latency uh, from where, where they work. All right, I'm going to jump over to, to my uh, demo system. And on the demo system, I'm going to go back to, a, to an account record. And I want to show you a few things within the account record that have changed. Okay, on the account record, uh, I already talked about you know some of the some of the different controls that you have. Uh, the main area that I want to focus on is the the additional business intelligence that's been added. So in the uh, sales data tab of an account now, you have quite a bit more information. Uh, with version uh, six point one, uh, we one of the things we talked about last year is that in all the group summaries and all the different ways uh, or all the different types of summaries. We tried to normalize all of the data. Uh, we added a lot of data points in version 6.1. Um, so there's not a lot of new data, data points within the sales summary, within the charts. 
the general summary, we have added a new general summary. So if you are somebody who utilizes Tour de Force for expense management, uh, if you are tracking expenses, tying those to an account, you can now look at some variations, so some comparisons of what are my actual my expenses as a percent of sales, as a percent of gross profit. So you can do some comparatives um, on summarizing expenses within an account. In the group summaries, um, not a lot has changed here. Uh, we have optimized some of the uh, load times, some of the way data loads within the group group summaries. Um, so you see some minor improvements, nothing of major significance there, um, other than the fact that quick grids are supported now in the group summaries. So I guess that is probably a ma major thing. Some of those things I forget about over time, but uh, quick grids are now supported in the group summaries. The item sales history, uh, you'll notice that a lot of the tabs um, in the item sales history, we've tried to take anywhere where we have a value for example, when I'm looking at item sales history and I see my invoice number, we've added a lot of hyperlinks. So you can actually open up, if I'm looking at a line item, I can go directly to that invoice, the invoice header information, any field that you map over from the ERP, as well as other items that are on that invoice. We've added in, this is brand new, we've added in sales invoices. So now, uh, from a customer perspective, you have the ability to actually see your open invoices. Uh, just like everything else in the system, you have the ability to define uh, what values you want to come across on the invoice header, as well as invoice line item de details. Uh, and then as far as booking sales, uh, sales orders and quotes, not a lot has changed there other than, you know, again, you have the ability, uh, whenever you're looking at these values, you have the ability to drill down on an order uh, to get to your linked items, or you can simply click on the hyperlink within the grid and go directly to that order detail to see order header information with order line details. Okay. All right. So on an account record, um, if I go to my recent items, and actually I want to go to my favorites, if I go to my favorites, you know, one of the things I, you know, I'm, I'm going to take take a take a moment to put a little plug in here. One of the things I'm very surprised at, and one of the things I would really recommend is that people utilize your favorites, especially for people that work within mobile or in core. Um, you know, I always tell everybody if you've got if you're a sales rep, if you spend 80% of your time with your top 20 accounts, you know, peg all those accounts into your favorites because if you do, if you peg items into your favorites, like uh, big opportunities you're working on, uh, accounts that you spend a lot of time with, whether you're in mobile or whether you're in core, you can always get to that account in two, two clicks. From anywhere, you can access that account in two clicks. So the account that I'm going to open up now is a TJ Equipment Company, uh, and you're going to see that this is not a customer account. This is a vendor account. So on a vendor account, we're going to continue to expand what we call vendor relationship management. So we're going to start talking about what we call VRM features. Um, there's going to be some enhancements for you to be able to better manage vendor relationships. The first part of that is obviously you can you can track all your email, all your contacts, you can link vendors out to opportunities, etc. But the vendor BI is the first phase of this. The way Vendor BI works, very similar to your customer-based business intelligence, except it allows you to look at a vendor and look at bookings, sales, profit, margin, specifically related to what you have sold for this vendor. But it also incorporates your purchasing history. All of the trend charts are going to incorporate sales and purchasing history related to this particular vendor. So if I want to look at my purchasing trends for the current year, for the last three years, so instead of looking at, um, if I want to look over the last three years and see what my purchasing trends are, um, this is a nice little tool for, for purchasing people or to be able to better track and manage vendor relationships or executives when you're going to sit down and meet with a vendor and you want to talk about what's happening within, you know, related to their, their products right from this screen, uh, you can get to all the summary information. The general summary is going to give you the ability to look at some uh, basic inventory snapshots. 
looking at value on hand, value on order, uh, average value, uh, doing a summary of your inventory by product group, by, by item code, uh, by lo location. So if you want to look at you know, inventory values by warehouse, you can do that. In this particular case, uh, I only have one warehouse. So you can look at inventory value information. As you go to the right, you can see group summaries. Uh, you still have all the same capabilities that you have when you look at a customer, but now I'm looking at my group summaries specifically related to this vendor. Uh, booking summary, same thing. I can look at everything that I've booked for this particular vendor. So what are our current bookings for the year? And then I can see by account what we've booked, Purchase orders give you the ability to actually get directly into a purchase order and be able to see purchase order purchase order header information as well as looking at line item details related to a purchase order and vendor bay or the uh, the uh, the vendor invoices so you can look at vendor purchasing in invoices to look at the the original invoice mount what was on freight basically anything that exists at the at the purchase order or the vendor invoice header in line detail can be mapped over into Tour de Force very similar to the way orders and quotes work. And then you get a snapshot of your uh, inventory detail. So this is actually pulling all of the inventory that you currently have on hand, on order, allocated, average cost, a lot of different inventory-based analysis. Okay. So um, you're going to see a lot more talk about what we call VRM, again, vendor relationship man management, but there's a lot of features in here that will allow you to expand. You know, our, our goal, obviously, is that uh, uh, you find enough value in the vendor BI stuff fe features that you're going to want to have other users within your organization utilizing Tour de Force. All right. I'm going to go back to my favorites, and now I want to talk a little bit about the opportunity-based BI. Okay, so if we look at opportunity-based BI, on this particular system that I'm looking at right now, I don't have a great example to show you, and I apologize, but, you know, the vendor bay or the, the opportunity BI is really intended um, for systems that are very, very job-oriented, or if you are a, an automation distributor, where you are working with an end user on a project and you're specifying equipment, and then you're going to have OEMs and uh, third-party integrators buying product related to that opportunity that you worked on. This is another great way to track that. So as you work on an opportunity, after you begin to book business to that, as long as you have a unique identifier, a project number, you can pick any field within Tour de Force and use that field to map it to your to your orders and quotes within your, your ERP. As long as you have that set up, then anything that goes into the system, I go to my Opportunity BI tab. On the Opportunity BI tab, every single order, every single quote, everything that gets invoiced is then going to appear under that opportunity. Now, one of the other things that you can do, and, th and this gets very com complex, and I, I'm going to try to explain it, and I hope I don't confuse all of you, but the fact that we know within our system that an order or a quote has a relationship to, an op to a job, that now gives us the ability to also provide in the Opportunity BI the ability to link based on those orders that are coming over related to this project, you can now tie out to purchase orders that relate to this, to this opportunity. So take, for example, if you're a company using Epicor Eclipse and the job management, if you have the Eclipse job number tied to an opportunity in Tour de Force, you can now tie everything related to that job. Every order, every invoice, every purchase order can be accessed directly from this job. We've done, this is actually being, this is, is also set up within for SX Enterprise. It's a great feature. It does require quite a bit of consulting to get it all configured. But once you have it set up, there is no better way to get a complete snapshot of a job and everything that got invoiced and ordered and billed to that, that job. So it's a really, really powerful tool, but it does require some thought and time to get set up. Okay, 
All right, so that's all on the on the on the business intelligence side. You know, naturally, when you look at the uh, the 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 manager's console. So if I open up my manager's console, all of the tabs in your BSI summary are going to respect all those new options for invoices and bookings and purchase orders. So all of those are going to fully be respected. All those features that I showed you at the individual account, I'm sure you guys are comfortable that all those same tabs are going to work in the manager's console, except now I'm able to see uh, that information rolled up. Also in, in Tour de Force Mobile, you have the same thing. In Tour de Force Mobile, the BSI summary in mobile is going to uh, have all of those new tabs as well. The vendor BI is accessible in mobile as well. Okay, um, just gonna do a little time check. Boy, we had a little delay there. I'm gonna have to race through some of this stuff. There's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, in the, I'm just gonna go to a contact. So hang with me here a second. So if I go to my recent items and open up an activity that I have in the system, uh, one of the things we've, we've done in the system on, on every item in the system, when you create an item, so it can, you know, this is most of the time this is used for sales act activity. One of the features we've had in the past is the ability to copy an activity to multiple contacts or to link a, an activity to multiple contacts. The copy to record function and the, um, uh, the ability to link an item to another record is now available anywhere on, on any item. So on an activity, on a ticket, on a note, any item in the system can be linked to multiple records or copied to multiple records. So a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between a link and a copy? Basically, when you link this act activity to 10 different accounts, for example, or 10 different contacts. Let's say you made a sales call. If you link the activity to 10 different contacts, when you look at that, at each of those 10 contacts in view activities, you would see that activity under all of those contacts. But when you look at that, look at your manager's console to roll up those activities, you would only see the one activity record. When you create a copy, so for example, if you're a company that manages touches, and so you want an end of, if you made a sales call at an account and you saw 10 people, if you copy that activity to 10 different P people, not only is that activity going to show up under that contact, it's also going to show up 10 times in the manager's console. So that's the difference between copying an item to multiple records or linking an item to multiple records. But depending on what your business processes are, the feature exists for both. Um, if you use a lot of body notes, you've got a, uh, there's a new feature that uh, you can just right click inside body notes and insert header information into um, the body. That's a pretty simple thing. When you do the in insert header, you can also insert full name or you can do different variations of how you insert. Uh, and basically what that looks like is if I just right click and say insert my time date stamp, um, it's it's a lot a lot easier to do that. Okay, if I go to a if you are a company that goes to trade shows, you get a lot of lists from vendors, for example, where you get leads sent to you. There is a new feature. It's a user based. It's a permissions based feature. It allows you to take. It allows you to take a file from Excel, and if you, you can copy a list of contacts or a list of accounts or a list of activities, you can copy and paste as an import. So if you have a list of tasks, a list of activities, a list of notes, a list of contacts, a list of opportunities, you can just take those from Excel and go directly in to Tour de Force. So if I open up, a recent item, if I take those contacts and go back to that TJ Equipment company, and if I wanted to add all those contacts at TJ Equipment underneath the contact grid, once I copy them under my other, if I have user rights, I can say paste those items from my clipboard. It'll take the source fields, map those directly in, 
and simply step through the wizard. It's going to tell you what you're about to do. You can finish that. Import those in. If you didn't have, you know, address and business phone and all that information, that's, that's okay. Once I refresh my contacts, now that these contacts are associated with this account, I can go ahead and use my propagate to contact utility to say, go ahead and put all the proper address, phone, fax, website, push all that information for my parent account, propagate it down to all my linked contacts. So importing data um, is, is a lot easier. You can import accounts into the manager's console. So if you do that same function, um, I was going to show that, but I'm going to skip over that. It's all outlined in the what's new documentation. But the copy paste function is really, I mean, this is really nice to be able to import, quickly import data into the system. And again, you have to have user rights to do that. All right, back on my manager's console, um, some really quick, simple things. Um, if I go to my contact grid, um, one of the things we've added, a lot of people have complained that when you have a grid with a lot of data and it's got parent data linked to it, that when you start to load, you had no way to terminate that loading to the parent data. So now when you load a grid, when it goes out to, to join those contacts onto your parent account data, you now get a dialogue that you can just cancel that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but if I refresh again, as soon as, it, as soon as the grid has the data and goes out to get the parent data, it's going to pop a dialogue that you can just cancel, and it'll immediately give you the data that you wanted. Okay? Um, one very important thing, inside of any account grid, now that you have vendor accounts and uh, customer accounts, um, if you have in your grids, if you have a view, if I just go to manage grid, where in an account grid, you are looking at, in, in, under your account types, you have vendor accounts mixed with you know, customer accounts. Okay, if you have grids that have both vendors and customers and prospects in that grid, you will no longer you have to you will not be able to see the BI data. So basically, if you want to, if you have a vendor grid, if you want to include your BI data in a grid, it has to either be a vendor grid or it has to be a customer grid because obviously so that that information is going to overlap between customers and vendors. They're the same fields related to a vendor as you would have related to a customer. So that's very important. If you have also um, inside of your system, if you have those grids set up, uh, that, that's one of the processes that you'll need to go through is, is to look at your account grids and you'll want to turn that off. Also, this setting that you see here, include BI data in a view, is now a view-based option. In prior version, if inside of your account grid, that was either it was either always on or it was always off. You didn't have the ability to do that view by view, and that became a major speed issue for, for people because in my global search, maybe I didn't want to have all my BI data pop populated, and I wanted to keep it very simple. But in my manager's console, I wanted to have some views that had BI data and other views that didn't. Um, now this is all view by view. You can determine whether you want that view to include BI data. Okay, while I'm in the grids, I want to show you a couple of other things. Um, one of the things you have the ability to do now is in your activities. So if I, I'm going to need to go back to, my, to our production system to give you a good example of this. So if I jump back over to my production system and if you look at any item grid, so a task grid, an activity, a note, a ticket, if inside of a grid, for example, in our business, if I wanted to go into our system and send an email to everybody that had been on a demo, so every contact that we had linked to a activity type of demo, from the item grid, you have the ability to select all those items and launch your mailer directly from here. So what does this do? And what's the value of this? You know, we use this for a lot of different things. If I get assigned a group of tasks to follow up after a trade show, maybe I've got 20 tasks. 
I don't want to go into all 20 of those tasks at one time, each individual task. I want to create a draft email. I want to grab all those tasks and grab all the contacts related and process a mailer to send all those in, in bulk. And then I can update because you now have the ability to do a mass update of the body control within an activity or within any body note. So this gives you the ability to write from a list of items to take the parent contacts of all those and send them directly into a mailing, pick what draft email you want to send to these to these people and process it. Very, very quick and easy. It allows you to look at, um, you know, like I say, activities, tickets. There's a lot of different examples that I could come up with. And we have some people that use our case management and support. So if you have support cases tied to a contact, you would have the ability to send out an, an, an email in bulk to the parent contact of every support request just to ask them whether they were satisfied with the service that they received. Um, there's a lot of different examples, but it's a really great feature uh, if, if it applies to your business pro processes. Uh, again, if you have um, a list of activities, a list of tasks, a list of notes, you now have the ability to mass update a body field or a note field. This was not there in the past. Um, so you can pick a, uh, a note field and you can mass update. So a text field, a note field, uh, those were not available in prior versions. They are, are now. So you can now, uh, and it can choose whether you want to append to the note, whether you want to append at the top, append to the bottom, or replace the existing notes. Okay. Okay. There's a couple of other things, but from a time standpoint, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip through them. Uh, they're kind of minor things. I want to talk a little bit about some of the administrative functions that have changed. Um, so if I go back to my demo system and first go to my company preferences. Inside of the company preferences, there is what's called a new item subject option. What this gives you the ability to do inside of Tour de Force when you create an activity or when you create an appointment or when you create a new email or anything that you create in Tour de Force, you now have the ability for that particular item. So for example, when I create a new task, by default, when you create a task in Tour de Force from an opportunity or from a contact, it's going to pull the contact's name the company name into the subject of that task. But let's take, for example, on an account. You wanted to change that, and you wanted to have the subject be something like the customer ID or the classic customer. You can come in, and you can build what you want that to be. So if you want it to be the customer ID dash the company name, Okay, you can pick any field related to that field, including your sales data. So you could put your year-to-date sales amount in the subject. Okay, um, You could put the location. So any field, you have the ability to build the string value of what you want. When you create a task from an account or from a contact or from any item, you can manually control what you want that subject to be uh, across the system. Um, this actually came from a customer. It was something that we did for a customer, and uh, it, was, it was a pretty nice, nice feature, and uh, the way they used it was pretty unique. We've also had a lot of requests for, or we had a lot of requests from people to be able to restrict. So every user has their user properties or their individual user settings. As a company, you can lock people down from being able to change the different fields in their uh, Tour de Force user or user preferences. Um, so their name, their department, their email address. You can turn on and off which of those fields are read only and only updated by an administrator versus those fields are that are that are visible and editable to the by the user. In the um, client install. So under the TDF client install now, uh, you have the ability when you create a install share to publish a 64-bit 
or a 32-bit install. So if you are a company that has some users that are running a 64-bit client and some users that are running 32-bit client, you can now post a 32-bit install and a 64-bit install. For IT people, this was kind of a headache, not, a, not kind of, it was a major headache. Uh, they could take advantage of the auto update feature, but if they had certain people that are on 64 and certain that are on 32, uh, you did not have the ability to publish both. You had to pick one or the other. You can now publish a 64-bit install and a 32-bit in install. Okay, uh, let me just go into the uh, screen designer. I showed you in the screen designer the ability to from within any, any item, any record, whatever you're looking at in the system, uh, as long as you have administrative rights, uh, the ability to quickly get out and edit that screen. So if I just right click on an activity, go to my edit screen, um, inside of the screen designer, uh, some of these things I've already talked about, but I just want to show you them. Uh, inside of the screen designer, we've got a, a lot of new fields. Uh, in prior versions, if you wanted to come in and look at a form and just quickly see which of the fields you had set up, to be visible on mobile or visible on web. You had to scroll through each individual field and look down below. Now at the top, every one of these key fields related to a control on a screen, you can add into the grid up top. Again, seems like a little thing, but if you're somebody who's managing screens and ha has had to go in and look at a form and determine which fields are visible on web, this will save you a lot of time. Uh, you can also quickly see which fields you have uh, field tracking. So this, this comes into play um, within uh, every uh, record or every uh, field. You have the ability to turn on field level tracking. So you can track all changes. You can tra track changes based on a number of days, uh, based on a number of changes. But the change logging at the individual field uh, is something that, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with that, very nice especially great on opportunities where you can look at an opportunity and look at the change log of when a sales rep said it was a high probability then low probability and the projected close was this month then next month then four months from now so you can track how things are progressing through the sales process also on the screen designer if you're working on a particular field Again, the little things mean a lot. If I'm looking at a field, I can quickly jump directly to that field to add up my values, where before you had to open up the UDF pick list, then you had to find the field, then you had to go to the list. So once again, just a lot of things to help save clicks. Um, when you go to add a new profile, I mentioned that you can create a main tab profile or a profile tab. So if you want this new tab to be a full screen tab, you've got control over that or if you want it to appear as a normal profile tab has in the past, you've got control of that as well. Okay, I think that's all in the screen designer. In the license admin, if you are a company that has a lot of account packages, a lot of users, uh, you will find managing your users a lot easier. Um, and managing permissions a lot easier. There is now what's called an auto permission setting. So when you go to set up permissions, you can now apply permissions in mass. So you can take a permission set, you can apply it to multiple groups at one time. So you can pick as many groups as you'd like, and then pick as many territories as you'd like, and then apply all those changes at once. In the past, if you had a lot of account packages and you had permission groups or you created a new permission group or you added somebody, managing all this, this complex tree structure uh, was, was quite a monotonous pro process. So it should be a lot easier to manage permiss permissions within the system now. All right. Inside of Tour de Force, inside of version 6.5, you now have in the system, if you are a company who has purchased light users in the past, when you upgrade to version 6.5, there is now a permission structure where you will need to designate users as either a full user or a light user. So system-wide, you will be able to define your users, whether they are a full user or a light user, 
And a light user is obviously going to be restricted based on the licensing terms of that light user. Okay? You also have the ability to inactivate a user. Common problem for years has been if I want to delete a user and add a new user, if I deleted a user, everything in the system where it was pointing to that user's SID or their, their, identif their identifier, it would get rid of that value, get rid of their, their name. Now, you can just inactivate a user, but every all the created by, the owner fields, it's going to maintain inactive users so that you can see you know, who that user was. So inside the permission manager, you now have uh, the ability to set your full users, set your light users, and then set users to either active or inactive. Um, all right, I want to cover something at a very high level. I'm going to talk just a little bit about the, uh, the quote manager. You know, as I mentioned, there's been a lot of changes in the quote manager, primarily focused on uh, changes that were required that are kind of behind the scenes. A lot of them, you, they're not even visible to you. Um, but as you add products to a quote and generate a quote um, within the system, there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes if you are using one of our tier one systems. That would help if I could spell. If you're using one of our uh, tier one ERP systems where you can get accurate pricing, uh, as you add items to a quote, behind the scenes now, as you add those items, you're going to get accurate pricing. So if I'm entering a quote for a particular customer, and I that customer has a ship to or a customer ID in the ERP, it's going to pull accurate pricing based on the price matrix files. If you are on, a, on Profit 21 where you have price contracts, it will show you all the available contracts that exist for the particular customer that you are quoting so that when you go to generate a quote, you can reference that price contract. And this will respect all of the um, the rules that exist in Profit 21 for how to apply a price, if there's a price matrix, a price contract. So all the logic that's in Profit 21 in the system is going to be respected. Um, now, if you do this for SX Enterprise, for Eclipse, for Prelude, for the other, other systems, because we are utilizing their API, which Profit21 does not have an API, but because we are uh, processing these functions through their API, you don't even have to pick the contract. It's going to apply the rules as you add these items. And then when you convert this over to an order through the uh, send to ERP, it's going to have all the accurate pricing when it pushes it into the ERP. Okay, um, let me just, uh, go back to my production system, and I'm going to go out to my mobile, into Tour de Force mobile homepage. All right, so when I launch into Tour de Force Mobile, there's a couple of things I want to point out in Tour de Force Mobile. First of all, if you are somebody that is using the Build Your Own Reports, um, you will find that the report category, so as you categorize your reports within Tour de Force Mobile, you can have all the different report categories that you have access to. All those reports are going to be available in Tour de Force Mobile um, to run uh, from the mobile world as well. All the features that I just showed you in the quote manager, um, the, the contract pricing is not respected in the quote manager. We are going to have a, a service pack available for version 6.5 that will incorporate the contract pricing. Uh, but matrix pricing, and if you're using a non-PP21 system, then the uh, pricing is going to be respected through Tour de Force Mobile. But all those features have been incorporated into the quote manager within mobile. 
Um, as you look at and navigate within mobile, I mean, as you when I just clicked on my favorites, you can see the performance of, of Tour de Force Mobile looking at my mobile or my favorites, my re recent items, significantly faster to navigate around mobile than it was in prior versions. Inside of my recent items, uh, kind of a something that surprised me, but inside of your recent items in mobile, uh, we showed you all your re recent items, but we didn't have the account name in there. So now when you look at your recent items, you can at least see the account that that, at, that, that item or record is related to. Um, again, I can't stress enough to use your, your favorites because when you're working in mobile and you want to access an account, um, it's two clicks away. Now, my system here is set up to open up my account records in, a, in the, the uh, simple form. Uh, but if you are working on a, on a device like a tablet where you've got it set to open up to the detail form, you're going to notice that opening up detail are significantly faster than what they were in the past. Let me just zoom in. I've got my resolution set different. So when you load your forms on mobile, they're going to be uh, a, a lot faster. All of the reports, so build your own reports, if you've got customer specific or account record level specific reports, they are available. All of your sales data, so all the invoices, sales orders, all the functionality I showed you in online is also going to be available in mobile. The ability to hotkey from, for example, if I'm looking at an account and I want to go directly to my next action step for that account. Uh, like I showed you online where I can be looking at my next action step or my last activity and I can click and hyperlink directly to that task or directly to that um, last act activity. So all those functions are available in mobile. The copy or the link to records and the copy to records that I already covered, both of those are available in mobile as well. Uh, you will notice that the uh, taking a a task or an appointment or an activity and converting a task or an appointment over to an activity in the core product as well as in mobile a lot fat faster uh, within the system. Again, if you're somebody that uses mobile and you are responsible for a lot of, or management of a lot of salespeople or you have a very complex tree structure where you want to navigate between the different summaries, um, inside, if you have a lot of account packages and if you want to do an account package summary, you can search for what you're looking for. So you can search your tree structure for a value to get directly to that account package. So if you have, for example, a lot of people have set up um, where they're some, where they have like five different account packages for one salesperson. You can just search by that salesperson's name. It'll show you all their account packages, and then you can select them all um, once you see them here. So select them all or un unselect them. The searching every summary setting within the system gives you the ability to uh, search. So if you're creating a new account, if you're creating anything new, you have the ability to clear that. Uh, you also have available on mobile now the other setting. So this was not available in prior versions. If you want to do a summary, uh, a BSI summary by customer ID, ship to ID, these were not available. They are now available in mo mobile. Um, I go to my recent items. And again, in mobile, if this is a function that you use within your recent items, if you log a sales act activity as a sales rep, and if you want to send a link to that activity to another uh, person, maybe to your manager, just to make them aware, this was somewhat of a pain. I, I will admit, in the past, um, you you now directly there's a drop down to make it really easy to pick who you want to send this to, and then you can just type in your message. And this email or forward item is basically going to send the link to that those, those users directly to that item in the system it's the for it's so, sort of like the forward a link uh, feature in the core product okay um, 
If you are somebody who is using planning, the planning feature in Tour de Force Mobile has been significantly, I've got to give a lot of, a lot of credit, a lot of help has come from Crescent Electric. Uh, they're a very large user of ours and they use planning extensively. Um, so loading your planning screen, if you are somebody who is set up as a planner where you have a lot of different branches and salespeople that you are reviewing or wanting to look at information for during the planning process, navigation within the planning is has been greatly enhanced. There's a lot of additional features to be able to expand account packages, refresh. Um, I'm not going to go into all those details, but there's a lot of new features in there as well. Okay, um, for those of you that have to get off, we're, we're a little bit over. Obviously, we lost some time because of the uh, power outage, and uh, just as an FYI, I am still without power. So I, I hope that my mobile device has been fast enough that you guys have been able to keep up. I think it probably has, or I would have seen it. Hopefully, the audio was, uh, was, uh, was okay as well. Uh, I want to go into to Q&A now, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the Q&A. And let, uh, if you have questions, there's some already here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through them. Um, first of all, the vendor BI does give, does this give access to purchase breakdown by vendor? Um, absolutely it does when you create a grid of vendors. Um, so within the, man, within the manager's console, you can load a grid of accounts that are all vendors. And then you can access all of those high-level data points by vendor. So the answer to that would be yes. You do have a lot. Every single data point that's being calculated about a vendor is available in a vendor account grid. Next question. Does Core have to be installed or will Light work? Matt, I believe that question was with regards to the um, quick events menu that you can populate with the hyperlink that you can use in conjunction with the ERP system or with the... Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, if you're a light user, yes, that would work. So, I mean, you, you, you do have to have Tour de Force installed on the machine, uh, but, it, does, but it, it does not require you to have a full enterprise. If you're a light user, that will work, yes. But again, based on your user permissions, that action panel is going to restrict you to only perform actions or view things that a light user would, would be able to access. Next question, will there be a monthly budget in addition to budget goal in addition to a year-to-date budget for individual and group budget goals? I'm not sure what that's asking, but when you set goals within Tour de Force, uh, one of the things you have the ability to do is, is set up seasonal breakdowns, so by period. So when you set a goal, all you've got to do is set a high-level goal and then click on a button and it will create a monthly goal based off of an even dis distribution of that goal or a distribution, excuse me, based off of a maybe a corporate where you say, okay, 12% of our revenues on average occur in January, but in February it's 9%, and then you can apply those percentages, what we call a seasonality curve, and those goals are going to respect that. Um, another thing I didn't point out, and I, I should, is that the planning now supports bookings. So within the planning, you can set goals at the bookings. So you've got sales goals, profit goals, margin goals, and booking goals are now supported in version 6.5. Next question. We have an older version, version 5.5, so not sure if this has been implemented in newer versions. Is item stock quantity available to see in TDF? Absolutely it is. Uh, when you go to your, you can search inventory. You can access your inventory directly in the manager's console. So if I just go to my items and right-click on products and go to my all fields view, inside of the, uh, uh, the products grid is now searchable. It's also accessible um, within the manager's console, and all of those values are going to appear. You've got a lot of different fields that you can map over from inventory within your ERP. And then again, these are searchable within mobile as well. Next question, how does the system determine if an account is a vendor? Uh, great question, and I apologize, I should have, uh, 
Inside of the uh, sync with your ERP system, there is an account sync, and then it, there is a, an account sync that allows you to bring over your customer IDs and ship tos, but then there's also a vendor sync. So inside of Tour de Force, if you map an account, there's an account type that determines whether that's a standard account, a BI, a master account, or a vendor account. So when you map over your vendor list from your ERP, that's a standard feature in the BSI connector that allows you to synchronize customers. It also allows you to synchronize vendors from your ERP. Anything that comes over from the ERP through the vendor sync is automatically going to be tagged as a vendor account type. And then obviously the BSI fields are going to be different in the sale. It's not, you're not going to see a sales data. You'll see a vendor data tab. Next question. Is TDF considering or even want to consider hosting services? Um, if I go back to my PowerPoint, one of the things that we are working diligently towards is uh, one of the things that we're, we've got uh, full-time developers doing nothing more than porting over all of the administrative utilities, so screen designer, user permissions, all the administrative functions. We are porting the entire product, and our plan is to have all the features of Tour de Force ported over into a browser-based environment so that we can uh, then implement and uh, uh, roll out a, SA a true SaaS offering um, that would be a browser-based environment for Tour de Force. So the answer is, is, is yes. As a part of that, we're also considering hosted exchange, hosted SQL as well, uh, but the jury's still out on that. Um, next question. Uh, can Matt start typing in a field to filter selections? Current version, times out, too fast, doesn't let you complete your entry before it starts to respond. I think you're probably talking about like in the create new. Um, yes, that has been improved. And depending on the uh, uh, on the connection speed that you have, as you type, uh, it, uh, it uh, there's also a user preference that you can set on how that works. So if you are on a slow connection, uh, when you start typing in, a, in the create new function, when you want to look up an account, um, that function is uh, going to be much better than it was in prior versions. Uh, just a quick example of where that occurs. For example, if I go to create new, if I say create a new account, um, first of all, when I go to create a new account, type in the name, say create. Uh, inside of that dialog, you know, I mentioned the account package lookup. I can go directly. If I've got a long series, I can go directly to the account package uh, based on the search. Um, and that also is going to work whether I, you know, if I create uh, another item, for example, if I say create new activity, obviously when I create a new activity, and then I start to type for the new account, okay, based on the, whoop, if I spell, That is going to give you the ability to, my apologies, okay? So it's going to give you the ability to, uh, um, this is actually, you can look at it in a grid or you can look at it in what we call a simple view. But yes, this is optimized and there's a user preference that allows you to control that. Hey, Matt, I've got uh, yes. Ryan Elliott here. He had a little bit of clarification on the sales goal question. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, so one of the things we added and people requested was at the group summary level, um, the ability to see the current month goal as well as the current year goal. So that was added for sales, profit, and bookings. Yeah, where Ryan's talking about is in the here. So inside of your sales summary, whether it's at the account or for an overall summary, you do now have goal, percent of goal for this particular month. That, that's what you're referring to, right, Ryan? Um, well, actually, in the group summaries as well. So if you do okay. product groups or you do account package goals, you can actually see a current month goal and a current year goal in the group summaries themselves. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, uh, is the roll-up feature in mobile now working? Current version doesn't always load sales history when the roll-up is clicked. Um, you know, as far I use that a lot in my demos. Uh, I'm assuming that it is. Um, if, if there was an issue, I don't have a particular uh, thing on my list, but I'm, I'm assuming that it does. Um, I can very quickly, you know, I'm pretty daring, so I'll just go to my recent items and open up that account diversified chemicals open it up and go to my sales data and roll it up and roll it up again so yeah I just went from I just went from the ship to to the bill to and from the bill to to the master account and it, it's updating the data so I would say the answer to that is yes uh, next question Excuse me, I lost my place. Um, okay, in the manage manage grid functionality available in versions of mobile. No, uh, you still you still cannot manage grids in mo mobile. Uh, obviously, that is something that as we move to a SaaS model and a a pure hosted environment, you're going to have to have the ability to manage grids. Actually, in our next release, we are looking at one of the things that we are contemplating and probably going to be doing is a complete redesign of the mobile grids um, you know the technology that when we started this three years ago what's available today is very different and so we're going to be looking at a um, you know doing a kind of a step back and look at making sure that everything that we're doing in mobile are we doing it the best and fastest way and most flexible way so this is an area that, that's going to get a major overhaul moving forward uh, next can you schedule multiple appointments from a grid similar to the multi-select email or task options you did? Uh, no, you can't create multiple appointments. Uh, you cannot mass create appointments. You can mass create activities, mass create tasks, but there is not a function to mass create appointments. It's an interesting one to get on the list. Have to require some thought. Uh, next question, where is the best place to start in exploring the Opportunity BI function, given that it takes time and thought to set up? Uh, that is something that you will definitely want to engage uh, one of the business consultants that is familiar with it. I mean, like I said, it's a pretty complicated uh, scenario, and several of the business consultants have worked, worked with it uh, and, and can help guide you through that. Probably would require a web session to talk through what you wanted to do, and then um, you know, make sure that it's actually going to work for you, but I, it's a pretty cool feature. I will say that. Next question. Can you view the export log information when a user exports something from the grid? Um, yes, you can. Actually, there is a, I forgot about that. There is a new function. If you, as a company, give your users the ability to, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out how I get there. Uh, I can't remember where that's at. There is a function in the system. If you give your users the ability to export data, there is now any time a user export, exports data, it is going to update the database and tell you exactly what view and when that user exported data. So there is a table in the database, and there is also a function that allows you to view export history so if I go to my export log viewer it will give you a history of who the person was what they exported the records they exported and the view that they were looking at when they ex exported it okay this gives you the ability to keep a, keep a log basically you know if you want to keep the last 30 days keep the last 60 days and then it'll clear that that log um, you know, th this came up. This is a great feature. If you've got a salesperson who leaves and you suspect that there was some foul play and that they took something with them, you can go directly to the log viewer and you would be able to see exactly what they exported and when they exported it. Next question. You mentioned improvements with the client update process. A bigger headache is the fact that users must be local administrators for the automatic updates to work. Uh, any plans to improve that? Uh, the only way you can get around that is if you use group policies uh, or if you use a system that pushes out. So um, if that's something that you want to change, uh, that is something we, uh, I, I believe there's a tech bulletin that talks about 
doing automatic pushing of updates. But the only way, I mean, that, that's not really a tour de force issue. Uh, that is a Windows issue. If you want users to be able to install uh, an, an application, they have to have rights to do so. Um, but if you want to push updates, uh, you can do that through group policies, through um, uh, through Act, Active Directory, and there are also other third-party tools available that you can push updates out to. We have, we have quite a few clients that do that. Next question. With respect to the timeout, was referring to mobile version. I would uh, suspect that people that have seen timeout issues, I can't tell you the last time I saw a timeout issue. Um, most of the things that would cause timeout issues were related to a lot of the things that I showed you in the speed and performance improvements. Uh, I can't guarantee you won't see timeouts, but I would suspect that there will be a whole lot less of it. And when you are getting a timeout, because we now have the tool that allows us to remotely di diagnose what's happening, we're at least going to be able to identify why that's time timing out. Next question. You mentioned the API when reviewing Quote Manager. Is purchasing the API required to use the Quote Manager if we want to pull over product and pricing from ERP? If you want to pull accurate pricing from your ERP for Prelude, Eclipse, InforSX Enterprise, you would be required to have that particular system's API. If you want that, that, that is going to be required for pulling accurate pricing and pushing a quote to an order. It's not required if all you want to do is access standard inventory and standard pricing levels. Next question. Follow up to roll up question on mobile. The roll up always worked for sales summary. It would not, however, combine all information on item sales history or open orders that has been addressed. I, I, I would tell you, I believe that that, that would be fixed um, prior to the upgrade. If, if you want to verify that, uh, I'm guessing it would. I, I can go in and actually, I guess, look at that. Um, back to where I rolled up. I can quickly tell you because I'm familiar with this account and the amount of data that it has, and I can absolutely tell you that this is showing all orders for all master accounts, um, and you can also see that because I've got multiple account packages that this account, this master account spans over. Um, so I, I, I believe, I, I, you know, I do recall seeing something related to that and uh, testing that a bit. So I, th I think you should be good to go. Uh, next question. Um, is it possible to view this versus sales out on the SKU or purchases by SKU? Absolutely. Um, if you do not have in your group summaries, if you are not using one of the group summaries in your system to track information at the item level, I absolutely recommend having one of your summary types be an item code summary. There's a lot of benefits to this. Um, one of the big benefits is um, that in your summary by item code or item description, uh, this also comes into play as very nice for gap analysis marketing. If you want to do comparatives between people that are buying one product and not buying another or comparing multiple products to multiple other because the gap analysis now supports multiple um, selections when you're comparing two different groups. You can have multiple items or multiple groups rolled up together. Uh, so yes, it does. Next questions. Are you going to add an export button on the plan screen for field personnel to better review data and goals? Are you going to add an export button on the plan screen to better review data and goals? Uh, I don't I don't know of any uh, requests for that. I don't know exactly. Let me just go back to the plan and look at that tab and see if there's anything there related to export. We'll be able to tell really, really quick. I don't see anything on the planning screen that gives you the ability to export, and I'm not sure at what level you want to export. What I would recommend is the person asking that question, I would recommend that you get a support request in uh, to outline the details of what you're actually looking for, You know whether you want to export at the top level or within the account. I'm not sure exactly what the, the business case or the, you know, what the, what the uh, goal is of that, but I'm not aware of anything that's in version 6.5. 
One other question is if a user has BSI summary, will they automatically get access to vendor BI or can you restrict this by user? Uh, actually, vendor BI, opportunity-based BI, those are all uh, additional functions. That's some of the stuff I skipped over because of time standpoint. But in the user permissions, uh, you have the ability to set your BI permissions. And by user, you can designate who has vendor BI versus opportunity BI, uh, and then also your account or, or customer-based BI information. So yes, there is full, full control over those permissions. Okay, now I have a problem. I can't see my, there we go. Questions keep rolling in, that's, oh, that's all right. Um, timeout was the wrong term. When using an iPad to access TDF, as an example, when entering the first few letters of an account name to filter, the system starts searching before you finish typing. Uh, is that a setting? No. Uh, that, is the way, that is the way the grids work in uh, mo mobile. Uh, again, that is one of the things that we would like to change in mobile. It's one of the things we don't like about the mobile grid. Um, so. That, that still works the same way. When you start typing in a mobile grid, it, it is going to start to, to uh, search. Um, so, I mean, I can validate that, I guess, by going into the manager's console, which I'll do here in a second. Um, so if I look at all active accounts, as you type within the grid, I do think, now that, you, now that I look at that question, I do think that we have... There's actually a delay where it doesn't search letter by letter, okay? So when I start to type, if I hit enter, it actually does, I believe, wait for you to hit hit enter before, when you're finished typing. So I, I, I think this, this could be looked at a little bit further. So if I do, if I start typing electric, it's not doing anything, but when I hit my search, Yep, so it does actually, once I type in and then I hit the return or I tab off, uh, it's actually pausing. I believe there's a pause, so if you're on a mobile device, uh, it's gonna actually pause when you're, when you're done typing, when it's gonna you know, re basically recognize that something's changed and then it's gonna filter. If you're on an actual desktop where you've got a return, you can just hit enter after typing it and it takes care of it. Next question. Um, We're in implementation now and have been told there's no way to assign items to multiple product groups. Um, I think you just said that that is in the new versions. Can we roll up groups into larger groups? Did I hear that right? You can't put one item. Well, actually, you can put, you, you can use modifiers in the system. Uh, that is a question that I would ask of whoever your BSI consultant is because there is the ability to apply what we call modifiers to your data. So if you want to apply rules where you want to create your own custom groups that are not in your ERP and then assign products to those groups based on rules, you can apply modifiers and assign them into those groups within the connector. But that, that would be get more, more detail uh, and more clarification for your BSI consultant. Uh, next question, please publish the entire WebEx so we can share with our sales leadership. Uh, we appreciate the, pro okay, so that's not a question, that's a comment. All right, that's the last question that is on here. And, and I have, yeah, yes. Um, there were a couple questions up here in the middle that got skipped. Um, one is in mobile, can we create an appointment and have the complete and convert that is linked with Outlook? Can we, can we create the appointment in mobile and have the complete and convert linked with Outlook? I'm assuming they're talking about can the complete and convert in mobile also complete and convert the Outlook appointment, maybe? Well, within, within the product, when you complete and convert an appointment, it actually, there is a field on the appointment in the database that it would already do, do that. So when you complete and convert an, a, an appointment from within mobile, that appointment would get tagged that it was converted to act activity. There's actually a field in the system. 
So if I go to our live system and look at appointments, I just want to make sure that I show you exactly. So if I go to my appointments last seven days, inside of our appointments grid, maybe. Maybe if I pick a view that works. Inside of, of every appointment grid, there is a field available that says converted to act activity. So whether I convert this to an activity from within core or from within mobile, this, this appointment should get checked as converted. Um, next and question. That, and, that, and that field's also available on tasks as well. So. Um, the next one, is there a way to email or forward info to a non-user from mobile? Uh, no, you cannot email details to a non-Tour de Force user from mobile. It's actually a good request to be able to manually put in a, uh, an email address if you wanted to forward it. The, the issue is you can email that to somebody, but there's nothing that they would be able to see because when they get the link, if they're not a Tour de Force user, they, they wouldn't be able to open the link any, anyways. Um, next one, can I change the default font and text size for the activities or any other info I put in rather than Times New Roman 12? Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking about the body control uh, when you enter an activity. Um, in, you know, I don't know. I'm assuming that, that that question is related to when you're typing in any body control. You don't have the ability on user-defined fields to change the font within any of the user-defined fields, but in, in any body control, you do have the ability to change the form format to whatever you want. Okay, next question, Ashley. Um, it looks like we have one more popped up at the end here. Is there a way to include the time of an activity in core like there is in mobile? The time of an activity in core, I'm not sure what they're asking. Um, the time of an activity in core like there is in mobile. I, I apologize. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're asking. Maybe if you're asking for the activity date, if you want this, this date to display time, that's just a, a function of the screen designer. Um, when you go into that field in the screen designer, you would ha you would have the ability <laughs> to designate the form. I'm sorry, the format here. Okay, I, I'm not sure what what's being asked there though, but there is a date time type of control here. Okay. So when you set up an activity, you, you set that field up to display date or date time. Any other questions, Ashley? Nope, that looks like it's it. Okay, great. All right, well, I'm going to pop back over. I just got a couple other things I want to cover um, before we get off today. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for their uh, patience. Um, and coincidentally, I am still without power. so. I guess I get the day, the rest of the day off when I'm done. Um, after the uh, session today, one of the things, or one of the things that was requested by a couple of our consultants, a couple of people wanted me to make sure I mentioned um, the way we develop our product and and the 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 vast amount of features that we add to our product are coming from you as users, and that's always been our goal: is to engage, and to listen, and to to continue to develop our product based on what our users are asking for. Now, we naturally can't give everybody everything that they ask for, and every feature that comes in, we have to look at it as a feature that is a one-off specific to your business, or is it something that we think other people can gain value from? I'll tell you, 99.9% .9 of the things that people ask for, we look at and say, huh, that's pretty cool. I think everybody could gain value from that. So most of the things that we hear do fall into that category. So getting involved is something that we want you to do. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you want. Um, so one of the best ways to do that is to be a part of the users group. Uh, there's a lot. I'm, I'm seeing more and more dialogue 
going out, going on within the Tour de Force us users group. It continues to grow. You know, naturally, we want you to contact us if you have questions. And I will warn everybody that Tour de Force does not monitor the blog. So if, if you are taking advice from people on the users group, there's a lot of great advice out there. But make sure that you validate the advice that you're getting because we're not monitoring that. We don't take responsibility for that. Um, so we, we can't guarantee that everything that's being said out there is accurate. Um, the other thing is, um, if you are a member of the users group, we are starting. We actually have, I, I think it's already occurred, we have formed a steering committee that is going to be put in place that's going to include, I think there's about 10 or 12 different companies that are getting involved in a steering committee to drive the, the development around Tour de Force Mobile. And what is mobile going to be in its next generation? And a lot of that is going to be based off of creating a more simplistic um, app-like, and I have to stress app-like. It's not, we are not going to develop an iPhone app. We're not going to develop a Droid app. We are going to be developing in mobile a very responsive web design that will be responsive, what's called um, uh, native HTML5 development, so that when you access Tour de Force Mobile from a smartphone, it's going to look like an app. But it's, it's all it is is just a wrapper around the browser interface. That is the way enterprise applications are being developed today. You know, anybody that would do any technical research can validate what I'm saying. A lot of users perceive that, gee, you need to have an app on the App Store. No, that's not the way we're going. That is not the best, um, that's not the recommended path for enterprise software. It's great for little one-off things. It's not designed for a pure app, which is the direction that we're, we're going. Um, so get involved in the steering committee. Uh, this is our first steering committee. We're asking customers that are involved in the steering committee. You know, we want the Tour de Force admins to be a part of that, but what's more important, we want your users involved. We want to have a salesperson who is using mobile day in and day out involved in that steering committee to hear what they want. So we're trying to get deep into the user base and listen to them. And we're really anxious to see what comes out of that steering committee. Uh, you can also get involved as a beta, beta site. So if you're interested in working with us on a new feature, uh, being a beta site, you get to go through the development process with us. Uh, we run regular beta site weekly review meetings. You get to get your hands on new features sooner. We've had a lot of people interested in being beta sites. Actually, it's kind of nice right now because most of the time, we're not asking for beta sites. We've got people on a waiting list that would like to be beta sites. It's kind of a fun process if you, if you like to get involved. Um, and also, you get to, to influence development. So some of the areas that we're going to be focusing on, you know, I already mentioned, we are definitely migrating the UI of Tour de Force Mobile to be a much more responsive uh, app-like environment when you access it from a phone or from a tablet. Uh, we are also going to be starting to introduce uh, administrative tools that are available in mobile. For those of you that are migrating more and more towards a pure mobile environment, there are we are porting over all the admin tools as well. And we do have a plan to have a, a new web user interface design uh, to port out all the existing features into that uh, web interface for 2015 in an item that is not on this list. One of the things that we are also getting ready to start development on very shortly is an integration to, um, we're going to start with an integration to Act On. Act On is a really powerful marketing tool for mail, uh, mailing campaigns. Uh, it can interface with web forms. We're going to be introducing an integration to allow you to have web forms and web analytics uh, tied into your account. So for example, you can open up a contact. You'll have a grid that will be able to show you the browsing history of, the history of that contact on your website, different pages that they visited, the last time they visited, how many times they visited. So all the web analytics and also being able to look at mailings that they've received and did they click through on those. So we're starting with Act On. Act On is an enterprise level um, marketing and email mark marketing tool. It's what we use internally and a lot of our customers have begun to use it. So that's the first application that we're going to be, be uh, beginning to integrate to as well. So you'll, you'll see that in 2015 as well. 
We are also going to continue to expand the business intelligence and the BYOR feature set. If you haven't seen BYOR and the power of what you can do in the Build Your Own Report Editor, in the lat it is phenomenal where that product has come since it was first introduced a year ago. And I give 100% of the credit to how far it's come to the users that have implemented it, that have been patient with us, that, has, that have given us the opportunity to give us feedback and let us respond to that. And I, th and I think as a company, uh, Ryan Elliott's been phenomenal at working with users and finding out what they want and then getting that stuff into development. So version 6.5, as I said, a lot of new stuff. And we're going to continue to expand the BSI connector. You know, our goal is to provide a BSI connector that can expand and integrate to data across the enterprise. You know, one of the things that Tour de Force is moving towards and our feature set is much more than CRM. Most of you bought Tour de Force as a Salesforce automation, a BI or CRM tool. There's a lot of functionality that expands well beyond traditional CRM or BI into business process optimization. Um, and as we, you know, we've been recognized by Gartner Group for our accomplishments in that area, and we are going to continue to expand and being able to, Tour de Force has really evolved into being a very powerful data warehouse that you can connect to lots of different data sources uh, to join that data together. Now, the process of getting upgraded to version 6.5, if, you if you've maintained uh, and if you're on version 6.1, the upgrade is a pretty straightforward upgrade. All you need to do is submit a support request saying, I'd like to schedule my upgrade to Tour de Force version 6.5. Um, we can provide you the upgrade steps. You know, 99% of people prefer that we do the server-side upgrade. That way, we take responsibility for that. If we do the server-side upgrade, it is um, the upgrade will be, will be billed based on the actual time spent. But um, it, we're seeing a, probably an average of 12 to 16 credits. Um, so, in, you know, in, anywhere in that two to four hour range to do the upgrade and uh, to step through the different things that need to be done as a part of the upgrade. Uh, if you have additional training that you'd like to schedule, whether it's on-site, web, obviously you can schedule that on demand. Um, prior to the upgrade, you definitely need to, uh, you know, in our environment, people ask you to schedule a call to talk about the upgrade. Please take advantage of that and do that. Uh, there are a few important steps that, that you need to be aware of. If you're a company that has a test environment, um, you know, obviously, if you want to upgrade your test environment first, that's great. Just go ahead and, and put that in the support request. If you don't have a test environment, uh, we also have a, a, a process for getting you set up with a test environment, and test environments are very good to have. So if there are any remaining questions, uh, Ashley, did anything else pop in as I was going through those final slides? Um, yes, there were a couple additional questions. Um, okay. Is there still a character limit when entering notes for activities? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, you have the ability to, to, um, to not have a character limit or, or to um, uh, employ a limit. So that is a setting that we can turn on for you. Um, if you have... Um, actually, I think that that's a couple of versions ago that we that we made made that change. So if you have anything in your system that you have a lot of body notes uh, that you do not want to have an eight eight thousand character limit, uh, you you can definitely turn that off. The downside of that, just keep in mind that that field is not going to be a fast field when search searching. So it's it's not unsearchable, but it's not going to be uh, fast. Once you, once you turn off the VAR, once you put on VAR, VARCAR max, which basically sets an unlimited characters in that field in the data, database, um, you know, the searching cap capabilities are going to be lim limited. But you can definitely turn it off. Okay. Um, a follow-up to the question on the fonts um, and the activity bodies. The question was, is there a way to change the default font instead of having to change it every time you're working on an activity? I don't think so. Um, honestly, I don't know the answer to that, but I don't. I don't think so. Um, let me. Uh, there's one area that I can look, and I can tell you pretty quick. No, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think there's a way to do that. Um, actually, that would be a good uh, feature request. Uh, I'm sure that we could probably get that incorporated into a user preference or a company preference even. And I'm sure it would be pretty straightforward to do. But I'm not aware of a way to do that right now. 
Okay, um, if you're on beta now, do you need to upgrade to the full release version? Um, you will need to ask uh, Jeremy. Obviously, you've been working with Jeremy on the on the beta upgrades. Um, I, we would definitely suggest that you get on the general release. Um, you know, obviously, there's things down at the end that, that get changed. So, um, you know, depending on what version are, uh, Jeremy can 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 give you the detailed information of what the differences are and and make that recommendation. I I, I wouldn't be in a position to answer that. Okay. Um, do we support SQL 2014? Uh, great question. Uh, yes, we do support it. Well, I, I should say we haven't done a comprehensive certification of the product on SQL 2014, but we have several clients running on SQL 2014 at this point. We are unaware of any issues. We have not run into any issues. Naturally, if we do, we'll fix them quick. And you know, fortunately, if it is a issue in SQL, then it's something that we can fix or update without a change in client side code, so we can we can apply a hot fix to the data database. So, don't let that. Um, um, there should be no concern of using SQL 2014. Okay. Um, is there an additional charge beyond the annual maintenance fee for getting the update? Absolutely not. Never has been, never will be. Besides the support credits, if you want us to do the upgrade, uh, any of our upgrades, whether they're platform upgrades, version five to six, uh, they're all included in your maintenance as long as you maintain your ma maintenance. Okay, it looks like that's all the questions. Okay, great. Well, I, I, I consider this a very highly successful afternoon. First of all, I appreciate everybody's time. I mean, obviously a lot of content that we covered um, honestly, I can't believe that my mobile hotspot worked the entire time because I don't have the greatest connection here. Um, and I will just let everybody know I'm still without power. So uh, I'm glad this work, worked out and we didn't wait, wait around for power to come back on. Um, if anybody has any additional questions bef uh, for the upgrade, obviously, you know, con contact support. Uh, I do appreciate everybody's time and attendance today. And Ashley, this will be recorded, right? This has been recorded, and you will be sending yep. some, something out. Okay. Yep. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And that recording will, you know, include all of my commentary as well um, as we lost power. So, one for the ages. All right. If there are no additional questions, again, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very much for attending, and I hope to see you all upgraded soon. Have a great, great day.